Hello, everybody. It's Victor with Cardiac Wire, and today we'll be talking to Dr. Matthew Seeger from Texas Heart Institute and Moin Hosseini, Chief Product Officer at Acucardia, about Acucardia's AKA VS technology for ECG and how it could potentially change the way we evaluate aortic valve stenosis progression. With that, gentlemen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you came to work together? We can start with Dr. Seeger. Excellent. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, so I, my background's in computer science. I've been a programmer for over 20 years now, tinkering from, from computers since an early age. I uh, was a computer science uh, undergraduate, master's in bioinformatics, so I've, and I've continued to be a, a statistician and programmer ever since. And so that allowed me through the serendipitous occasion to meet the team from Accuracardia. And uh, we've done some pretty cool things that I'm excited to talk to you about. And being a budding electrophysiologist, the intersection of AI and EKG seemed like a very natural uh, relationship. And so we've uh, been excited to talk about more of what we've done. How about you, Moin? Hi, my, my name is Moin Husseini. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Accucardia. I've worked my entire career in the medical device industry in a variety of different roles, from embedded system software development in medical imaging to product management in medical imaging, um, critical care and structural heart, corporate strategy, uh, and leading a business unit uh, most recently before coming to Accucardia. And here, this is my first foray into leading an early stage company and uh, developing novel applications in the AI cardiology work workspace. And we're really excited about the breakthrough things that we've been able to develop here in a short amount of time and, and soon uh, hopefully bring to market. Gentlemen, thank you for that background on yourselves. I want to get into it. Uh, Moin, could you introduce a little bit about Accucardia's AKA VS technology and discuss why it was developed and what the potential you saw at Accucardia? Sure. So Accucardia is a broad ECG-based diagnostics company. We have an FDA-cleared platform for automated arrhythmia uh, interpretation. And we sought to take that expertise and, and start applying it to the development of novel AI-based ECG algorithms. And our very first application was in aortic stenosis. We chose aort uh, aortic valve stenosis for a number of different reasons. The first is for uh, its burden on patients and the healthcare system. So it's a condition that has a high mortality rate. Um, mortality is as high as 50% within the first two to three years of onset of severe uh, disease. Additionally, um, there is a, a good therapy available. So if we were to improve diagnosis, there is something that can be done about, uh, about the condition. And then thirdly, do we bring something special to the table? And I think our topic here today addresses some of the unique things that our algorithm can do, not only in terms of detection, but also in terms of um, this, the tracking or staging of the disease, as well as informing the prognosis for patients. And I think that's a unique capability that we bring to the table. Well, Maureen, thank you so much for that background for our audience. It's really rewarding to learn so much about Accucardia and the technology you're developing. Pivoting a little bit away from the tech for now, uh, Dr. Seeger, I know you recently presented at ESC a study about AKAVS. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about it, why it was conducted? Maybe tell us some of your more important results and what their broader interpretations could be. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the study. So the idea behind the study came about because we know that the AKAVS score and algorithm works well at diagnosing severe, moderate to severe aortic stenosis. But taking a step back in the field in general, a lot of AI EKG studies have been done there and stopping there just at diagnosis. We wanted to take it a step further and see, can this data be used in an additional capacity? So uh, we took data from our TAVR registry. So we had about 2,200 patients that underwent TAVR at our institution. And we took every single EKG that the patient had leading up to TAVR. So this was over 10 years of data of EKGs leading up to TAVR. And we wanted to see, does the, do the scores trend in a certain direction for different people? And so we let the, essentially the computer, we use a machine learning technique called clustering to identify groups of these people and see, do they have trends in similar directions? And what we found were, was, yes, where there are three main trends or clusters of people, some that were very low 
throughout the entire 10 years, some that were high for 10 years. And then an important group had this rapid progression about two, two and a half years before TAVR. And so the importance is that we can see these trends before they manifest in severe aortic stenosis and need TAVR, but also it adds prognostic information. So how do we do that? So we looked at the gold standard, and that's the in the U.S., the STS, Society of Thoracic Surgery Risk Score. In Europe, it's the Euroscore 2 risk score. When you add the cluster membership, so when you know which group the patient belongs, and you add it to the established risk scores, we help improve the overall performance of those scores. Specifically, we help up-classify patients that would have been missed from a traditional risk score. So those that were deemed low by our traditional gold standard methods, adding AKAVS membership to that risk score helped up-classify them into, hey, we should be paying more attention to these patients. They're more likely to have an adverse event, whether it's mortality, length of stay, or uh, some sort of needing a pacemaker in the future. Uh, so that's the, the results in general. I think the important thing is that, they, to put this in a broader context, is we really accomplished three main goals. The first was showing, yes, the AKVS score does very well at diagnosing severe aortic stenosis, moderate severe aortic stenosis. The second is we can add additional capability to these scores by looking at them before uh, a critical event like a major surgery or procedure like TAVR. And this can manifest oh, two to four years before the procedure takes place. And then finally, we add prognostic information. So we take additional established tools that we use to see if a patient's going to have a bad outcome. If we add the AIEKG on top of it, we can really help identify patients that we would have missed from traditional methods. Well, thank you for explaining that research. I mean, it makes it so important to understand why being able to adequately quantify this progression is so important. I'm curious, as a clinician, how do you currently assess the disease progression in aortic stenosis patients who are you know, potential TAVR candidates? And what do you see AK's ECG technology contributing to this in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. So backing up a little bit, the first step is finding the patient to begin with. So as a cardiologist, we're referred patients that have valvular disease, but thinking it in broad broader spectrum, over 80% of patients start their medical journey in the primary care office. They don't come see a specialist on day one. So there's a lot of patients that have undiagnosed disease that are walking about, maybe having symptoms, but not being able to explain their symptoms. So the most one of the most common tests that are uh, employed in the primary care office is a EKG. You're not going strict to an echocardiogram right off the bat. The 12 lead EKG is standard. And there's a lot of features on an EKG that can be missed or we don't even know about as cardiologists that an AI system can interpret. So having a system like AKAVS that can pick up those nuances on an EKG that would otherwise have been missed to help triage them to a specialist like a cardiologist for further care is the first and foremost, the most important thing. So now you have the diagnosis, what do you do? Well, depending on the severity of the valvular disease, you need echocardiograms every Six to two, six months to two years, depending on the severity. Well, that's burdensome. That's a, that's a cost on the healthcare system. That's an inconvenience to the patient having to go sit down for a 45 minute exam. You have to have a sonographer, you have to have a physician interpret it. Uh, it, it it's timely. And not everybody has that ability to have a sonographer echocardiogram in their backyard. So some patients are traveling hours to go get this test every six months to 12 months. So having a more non-invasive test, like a 12-lead EKG, could potentially provide additional uh, screening and evidence and evaluation of progression that a, a routine echocardiogram could. Well, I mean, it really does put into perspective how much this technology could change. I want to hear a little bit from Moyne now. You know, with what we've heard from Dr. Seeger, we've heard a lot, obviously, about the clinical uh, improvements. What are maybe some practical improvements we could see from implementing a technology like Hachycardia's AKVS algorithm? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a number of things. So first and foremost, as much as 50% of all cases of aortic stenosis are missed, and until post-mortem. So that is a large number of patients that just fall through the cracks that could, could be saved 
additionally, um, even for those patients, as Dr. Seeger had, had uh, alluded to, even for those patients that have uh, their condition diagnosed but are not yet candidates for intervention, follow-up and surveillance of the, of the condition can be difficult because as much as almost half of counties in the United States are missing a cardiologist and similarly access to an echocardiographer or to echocardiography is, is limited. So a technology like this would help significantly expand the reach and surveillance of a, 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 for aortic stenosis. Additionally, by detecting the condition earlier, uh, we can get referral to treatment earlier, which will lead to better outcomes. And so that would save not only precious years of life for affected patients, but reduce costs to the health system in terms of um, you know, having to deal with less adverse events, in terms of uh, cost to society from premature mortality, premature death, et cetera. So there's a significant impact here that we anticipate is possible by identifying patients earlier on, referring them to treatment, and then properly stratifying them for surveillance post post intervention if they're identified to be higher or lower risk. Thank you for that background, Moin. Um, moving now a little bit to Dr. Seeger, you know, we're getting a little philosophical here. We've heard about this idea of ECG as an emerging biomarker. And you mentioned earlier just how common ECG is in the primary care and as a first line of detection. What are your thoughts on ECG as an emerging biomarker, not just for detection, but for quantifying disease progression? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think the ECG as a biomarker, AI ECG as a biomarker, is going through the it's it's growing up stages that we see with a lot of other technologies. Like uh, a, a great example of this in the TAVR space is in calcium scoring, Agatston score. At first, it was used more for diagnosis, then it started to move in towards prognosis, and now we can use it to guide therapeutic interventions. If you have an Agatston score, it can really help determine. Uh, how you should be deploying the valve that certain valve manufacturers may benefit more than the other. In AI ECG, I think we're starting to see that same kind of trend. A lot of the research to date has been in diagnosis. What we're starting to do and what we want to do is then look into prognosis and progression. And then the holy grail is in can this help us evaluate uh, individualized treatments for patients and they are personalized medicine that we're all striving to do. So AI ECG as a as a biomarker is uh, is very exciting. We're very early on in the stage of its growth cycle, uh, but research like this, I think, can help push the limits of what we can expect and what we should be using for AI ECGs. Thank you, Dr. Seeger. That's really thoughtful, and I really do agree with you that we'll be seeing a lot more potential from this technology in the years to come. But moving on with the potential uh, for you, Moin, you know, what do you envision as the healthcare economic benefits of a technology like AKAVS, and does it have a path to reimbursement in the future? Absolutely. So, so I think the economic benefits of both to adopting hospitals and to the healthcare uh, system will be significant. So there's been a, a, a number of studies done to quantify the cost of delayed care in the case of aortic stenosis. And that ranges, depending on the type of patient, whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, it ranges from eleven dollars to $13,000 per patient per year. So if we were able to uh, enable earlier intervention in patients, uh, by saving perhaps as much as a year, uh, it, um, we could save as much as eleven to thirteen thousand dollars per patient. And if you think about that at, in aggregate, that's about in in the U.S. alone uh, over ten billion dollars of benefit. Additionally, the costs of premature mortality in the U.S. alone could be as high as eleven to eleven and a half billion dollars. Uh, so there's significant impacts to society and to the healthcare system by addressing both the um, excess mortality associated with aortic stenosis and the in, in improving outcomes by earlier intervention. Additionally, um, there are emerging there are new CPT three codes 
0764T and 0765T that are that have been created to to provide reimbursement for AI assistive technologies that um, um, help in identifying cardiac dysfunction. And this can be low ejection fraction, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and in our case, um, we believe aortic stenosis detection would also qualify. And for every uh, ECG um, that's indicated and, and um, analyzed with the technology in the space, uh, it would be $128.90 per ECG, which is a, a, a meaningful reimbursement for hospitals that uh, adopt similar technologies or this technology. So um, I think benefits to the hospital, bottom line, benefits to society broadly um, um, are, are, are fairly clear. I'm going with the way that the U.S. healthcare system is structured. It sounds like Achicardia's platform is positioned perfectly to both benefit it and those who use it. Um, we're getting close to wrapping up here. So for Dr. Seeger, I'd like to ask you, are there any takeaways from your research and practice that you would like to communicate to your fellow cardiologists about this technology or anything else? Yeah, that's a great question. Taking a step back, whenever you see an AI study, you should be really asking, what is the computer looking at? And a lot of times in other biomarkers and other uh, tests that we have, it's, they, they're very tangible, identifiable artifacts. Like it's easy to see calcium. It's very easy to, to understand high pressure, like if you're doing a right heart cap. AI and EKG is a little bit harder. So the, uh, what we should be doing is trying to understand what's the computer looking at. And a lot of the work that we have coming up is in understanding when you have a high AKAVS score, what is that manifesting as on a right heart cap, on an, uh, not just an echocardiogram, but also as in quality of life, KCCQ scores, uh, CT scans? Uh, what are the ECG findings that are, are manifesting in these high scores so that you can get a sense of, of validation that these scores are really looking at the things that we clinically think are important? Um, and then finally, trying to use these scores and tools in avenues other than diagnosis. I'm such a proponent of trying to find identify, or, uh, identifying individual treatments for uh, specific patients. So using the right tool at the right time for the right patient. And AIECG is really uh, putting itself in the, the right space to be a potential tool to enable that uh, precision medicine. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure to learn so much about AKAVS, Dr. Seeger's study, and all the hard work you're doing at Acucardia. We're looking forward to see where it goes. I've been Victor, this is Cardiac Wire. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>